Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. In this segment, we'll join up with the 2015 Chicago Cannabis March. What do we want? Free the weed! When do we want it? Now! I'd like to now introduce uh, State Representative Robert Markwick. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, people have to reach out to their elected officials, whether it's their representatives in the Illinois General Assembly, and even more importantly, their representatives in Congress. Because as long as we have the federal uh, statute that makes the possession and, and sale and distribution of marijuana illegal, everything we do at the state level is done with the fear that the federal government could come in and usurp us. When we outlaw drugs, when we prohibit drugs, we take something that grows on a plant and we make it the most valuable commodity on the face of the earth. So now the kids are shooting one another, fighting over who's going to control the corner. We catch some of them, so we build prisons to the point where we can't pay for schools. We corrupt the police, we corrupt the kids. And uh, because uh, when you outlaw something, you give up the right to regulate and control it, we end up with people overdosing on drugs. They think they know what it is, but really they don't, because there's no government control of what it is, how strong it is, what it was cut with. When we prohibit drugs, we delegate their control to the street gangs and to the drug cartels. We need to be honest about marijuana with students and teenagers if we actually expect them to take us seriously about this stuff. Right? Exaggerating claims about marijuana's harms, claiming it's a gateway drug when we know that's an unfounded theory, that stuff doesn't work. We can't scare kids into not using marijuana. We've been trying that for a long time and it doesn't work. So when we think about what we want our marijuana education to look like, we want it to be even and honest. Write their names down on sticky notes in the refrigerator, and every day when you're brushing your teeth or you're eating your Wheaties, call them. Tell them your name. Tell them you're calling every day. Because what happens is they have to document that call. Every call you make, they document. And the more you call, the more they have to document. And the more they'll be comfortable with passing a medical cannabis bill or a tax and regulate bill. Because when we're down there and we're looking behind us, there's not many people like there is even here today pushing this. And if you can't come down there, which we understand it's gas money, it's, it's a lot of time, you can call those numbers on those sticky notes. A couple of bills here that are currently pending in Springfield in the General Assembly. Uh, we have a, a decriminalization bill, House Bill 218, which would uh, reduce penalties for under 15 grams of cannabis possession to a uh, ticket. You would no longer be able to be arrested anywhere in Illinois if you possess less than 15 grams or if you possess paraphernalia. That bill would also reform our driving under the influence of drugs laws for cannabis uh, and make some other changes uh, that are positive changes for our cannabis policy. Uh, we also have a bill, House Bill 3299, which would extend the medical cannabis pilot program. We've had that pilot program in place since January 1st, 2014. It went into effect. Uh, and here we are in the middle of 2015, and uh, patients still don't have access to their medicine. And so that bill would extend this four-year pilot to be four years uh, from the time the first dispensary opens, so we get a full four years of patient access before it comes up for renewal in the legislature. This is Dan Lynn from the Illinois Chapter of Normal, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television.